Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee. Thank you.
church again today Looked at all the fine array Not many little faces that I see They must be taught from the start They must have Jesus in their heart Where are the children? Where are the children? Well, when at last we run a race, and who will be there to take our place? Will the house of worship fade away? Well, amazing grace, it won't be long. Is Satan stealing them away? Are we too blind to see the day? Oh, where are the children? Remember Jesus said it best, When I return, will I find faith? Not so many years are past, but the changes, they've been fast. This world grows more wicked every day. When we get to heaven and we look around, will our children there be found? Oh, he loves the children. Remember Jesus said it best, when I return, will I find faith? Oh, where are the children? Where are the children? Remember Jesus said it best, when I return, will I find faith? Maybe see if you would take your Bibles this morning and turn with me over to the book of Luke, chapter number 21. Luke, chapter 21 today. We're at 3015 Upper Peach Tree Road, Murphy, North Carolina, 28906, on the World Wide Web at Upper Peachtree Baptist Church dot com. We're on YouTube, SoundCloud, three radio stations a lot of the time in the local area. Certainly appreciate all the ministry, the work that goes into that. Brother Johnny, Brother Jimbo, all that that goes into the ministry. Appreciate Brother Jeff for providing us with these testaments. And Brother Silas for the tracks. And uh, Sister Cindy with the labels. And uh, We've got cards in there and everything. God's give us all the wherewithal for the witness. And in these last days, God help us to do that. Luke chapter number 21 and beginning in verse number 28. Luke 21 beginning in verse number 28. The Bible said, and Jesus said, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. And lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And I'd like to speak today, Lord willing, on this subject. Look up and lift up and pay attention. Look up and lift up and pay attention. I don't know if you've noticed, 
But all the things that the Lord talked about, that Brother Jeff talked about this morning, that's over in Matthew 24 and in this chapter and in Daniel and all the way through the Bible, the beginnings of sorrows, all these things are ramping up. And I like what the writer of the Sunday school lesson said. And if you didn't read this Sunday school lesson this week, praise God, read the Sunday school lesson. But there, when Jesus said, these are the beginnings of sorrows, that is a, comes from a Greek word that has to do with a woman in birth pains. And the closer she gets to delivering that baby, the more those pains intensify and the closer they come together. Listen, praise God. The earthquakes, the fire, the crime, all that we see going on in the world today is spiraling toward a time that this world has never seen before and will never see again known as the Great Tribulation. These are the days of vengeance, Jesus said. All the while the church has been crying out, Lord, avenge us of our adversary, the devil. And God help us. And the Lord will avenge His church against the wicked and against all the sin that's in this world. But before that, the church is going to leave out of here. And I'm telling you, there is a sense of urgency. Time is running out. Amen. Say, when's the Lord coming back? I can tell you, I'm pretty sure He's coming back for me sometime within the next 20 or 30 years. Jesus said this, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Some of you are well stricken in age. I love you this morning, but facts is facts, and I'm getting there myself. I'm 53. Praise God, that when I turned 40, uh, the, some of the church folks gave me a little uh, gift, and it was a little, uh, a little yellow chicken, and it's feet glued to the table and you go to pick it up and it'd say we're no spring chicken we're no spring chicken <laughs> friend I'm, I'm no spring chicken you ain't either what am I saying is I'm saying prepare to meet thy God and we need to be about the Lord's business we don't need to be playing church in the last days we need to be the church we need to be the light and the salt and unashamedly proclaim the Word of God to this lost and dying world that's on their way to a place called hell. Amen. Jesus said this, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the word redemption. The word redemption come into my mind. And all I could think about was when I was a child and and back then, uh, you saved your Coca-Cola bottles. And you would go over there and they were worth a nickel back then. This is, I'm talking about in the early 70s. and all, uh, There was a little general store over there. A place where my daddy bought me a fishing pole when I was five years old. I'm still fishing with that same fishing pole, praise God. It's lasted me all these years. That was 1972. But you'd go over there and you'd take your Coca-Cola bottles back to a man named Paul Curley. What a nice man. His wife went to church with Paul. was a World War II veteran and, and such, a, such a nice man. But you'd go over there and you'd take the bottles back to him and he'd give you a nickel for, for every bottle. You redeemed that nickel back. Let me tell you something. The Lord has given us the earnest of our salvation, which is the Holy Ghost. But he's coming back to redeem his bride, the church, and take her home. Amen. Our redemption is getting ready to draw nigh. We need to act like it. In these last days, we need to be the light and the salt that God called us to be. I had a conversation with one of my family members this last week. They're fearful. Nervous. I said, God did not call us to a spirit of fear, but He called us to a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. God don't want us to be fearful in these last days. He wants us to praise God, watch and pray, and lift up our heads and keep looking for the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to be looking for His return. Listen to what the Lord said. These things begin to come to pass. Do you know that they've begun to come to pass? Amen. Just in this last week, 244,000 acres have burned in California. You say, what's that got to do with anything? 
during the tribulation time, during the, the onset of the tribulation, all the green grass will burn up. One third of all the trees on planet earth will burn up. Say so you believe that? I sure do. And the world is getting primed for that. All these fires and the smoke that came all the way from out there and clouded the skies and put a haze over the mountains in western North Carolina, it's still sinking in. Charlotte and I were out at Lake Chattooga yesterday evening right before dark walking the dog and that haze was a laying down over them mountains down in there. I'm telling you, listen, praise God. We're not far from the tribulation. Just in this last week, 8.2 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Alaska sent out a tsunami warning all the way to Hawaii. The earthquakes, we've had more earthquakes in the last 100 years than we've had in all recorded history. We've had more earthquakes in the last 10 years than we've had in the last 100 years. The birth pains are getting closer and closer together. The very creation is moaning and groaning for the return of the Creator. Before we can lift up our heads, and before we can look up to our heaven, God bless your heart, we better wake up. And we better look around. We better see what's going on. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said, verse 29. And He spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Friend, I'm telling you, while we're here, as the man said a while ago on the video, we are ambassadors, we are emissaries of Christ's heavenly kingdom here on earth. We're in the world, but we're not of this world. We don't need to be looking like, acting like. Uh, come on. Amen. We don't need to grunt, squeak, and squawk like the world either. Amen. We don't need to talk like the world. We need to talk like, praise God, we're on our way to a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Uh, we wait for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't cuss like the world. We don't grunt and gripe and growl like the world. Listen, praise God. We need to be going down the road saying, praise God, bless His name. Hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty. Praise God, Jesus is coming. We had an event yesterday up on the square in Hazel. The mayor was there. The sheriff was there. A lot of people was there. Mr. Kenneth Woodard turned 100 years old. They had a celebration for him. Mr. Woodard's a World War II veteran. He's a member of our post in Hayesville. We went up there and had banners and stood around with flags and wished him happy birthdays. He made laps around the square in a convertible. There's a lot of ministry going on up there in that crowd that day, praise God. Charlotte was talking to people and I was talking to people. We was telling them about Jesus. And I was standing there with a the doctor, and the sheriff, the mayor. The mayor stuck his hand out said, how are you doing? I said, praise God, Mayor, I'm above ground and heaven bound with the hammer down, brother. Amen. I said, I'm saved and I'm on my way. And I said, that's the best shape a man can be in on this side of the river. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, the sheriff was standing there. And we got to talking and everything. I said, Bobby, I, when you were running for sheriff, I was over in the in the store and somebody said we don't know this man we don't know him I said well give him a call I'm sure he'd come out and, and talk to you but I said I can tell you one thing about him he saved because I was there when it happened and I guess I ought to know I was preaching homecoming Sunday on September the 27th and I don't even remember what he knew the exact day he told me I didn't remember the date, the, the year. I think it's somewhere around 2014, somewhere along in there. He came to the altar and gave his heart to Jesus. 
I'm telling you, we need to be about God's business in these last days. And now's not a time to be stymied up and dumbfounded and scared to death to witness. Did you notice on that video, and, and Brother Jeff, he, he, thank you so much for getting these. We've already give out one batch. I would encourage you to take these. These aren't for you to keep. These are for you to give to somebody. You say, who am I going to give it to? Whosoever. We give it to whosoever will because that's who Jesus came to save. Did you notice when he went to witness and tell people about Jesus, he just opened it up to the very back? The scriptures to lead somebody to the Lord, there's plenty of scripture to lead somebody to the Lord right here. All you got to do is open up. God loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's on page 180 in this book. It tells you right there. The very next scripture says, But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5 and 8. That's on page 299. All are sinners. God's remedy for sin. It gives you the scripture. You can talk to somebody. Brother Silas, give us these tracts. Are you saved? Let me ask you something this morning. Are you saved? Amen. <laughs> As Brother Jeff said this morning, do you know that you know that you know that you're born again? Because can I tell you, our Lord said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You'll be forever shut out of the kingdom of God if you haven't experienced a new birth in the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, what do I got to do to be born again? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Enough to repent of your sin. Jesus put it this way. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen. John the Baptist said this. Repent and believe. The apostle Paul said, repent and believe. Turn from your sins and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust Him. You that worry yourselves to death watching Fox News and CNN. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let me tell you, one of the best church signs I've ever seen in my life was at Faith Tabernacle Church in Hazel. I was driving by one day and I can't get it out of my head. It's been several years ago. But it said, worry looks around and faith looks up. Amen. Lift up your head. Look up. Be aware and know that the fig tree is getting ready to bloom. Get ready to know that summer's near. Get ready to know that the tribulation is getting ready to befall the earth. But get ready to know that the church is getting ready to go in the rapture to meet the Lord in the air. Brother Jeff said, I might live to see Jesus coming in the rapture. Can I tell you, whether we're above ground... Or whether this old body's in the clay, we're going to see him coming. Amen. That soul will come with him, but that resurrected body's coming up out of the grave to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But in the meantime, until the Lord comes back, God help us to be found faithful. Help us to be found witnessing for the Lord Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be afraid to hand somebody a testament and tell them God loves them. Jesus died to save you. God raised him from the dead. He's coming back again. Don't you want to go to heaven? Are you 100% sure? I mean, that's what the man said this morning. How sure are you? And you say, well, here's what the devil's, here's the lie the devil will tell you. I don't care if you're 4 years old, 14 years old, or 104 years old. The devil's going to tell you, yeah, it's probably real, but you got plenty of time. No, you don't. You're looking at a man that spent 23 years working car wrecks, and I've seen children killed in car wrecks right here in Cherokee County, 7 years old, 14 years old. I've seen teenagers killed where their car blew up. I've seen them burnt beyond recognition. I'm telling you, in a heartbeat, in a moment, in a split second, they stepped out to meet God. Amen. There was a young man this last week they showed on television, healthy, as far as they could tell. Got coronavirus, had a double lung transplant, barely hanging on for his life, couldn't even talk. 21 years old. 
however we go. This body is perishing a little every day. The outward man is perishing, but the inward man is renewed, praise God, day by day. And every one of us is going to stand before the Lord, whatever shape we're in. And can I just tell you the absolute worst thing? I'm telling you on the authority of the Bible this morning. The absolute worst thing that can happen to you in your life is to die in your sins. I don't care if you're a hundred years old. What's that compared to eternity? If you're a hundred years old and you die in your sins and you go to a place called hell, your life has been lived in vain. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity and vexation of spirit, saith the preacher. We'll all step out and meet God. You can play church and church can't save you. Let me tell you something, your own righteousness can't save you. You can't buy your way in. You can't live good enough to get your way in. You're going to come by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ or you won't come at all. I'll tell you something, praise God. I love you this morning. But if you're living your life gripped in fear, worry, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love and peace and joy. Listen, God don't want you to be fearful. I don't know why I'm preaching this this morning. I just have to trust the Lord. But God don't want you to be fearful. Listen, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We need to with confidence take the word of God and live in the peace that Jesus wants us to have. If you're not having peace of mind, then you're not living what Jesus wants you to live. Jesus wants you to have peace. He wants you to have love. He wants you to have joy. And when the world looks at us, if they see peace, love, and joy reigning in our life, then there's something there that they want. When I see these saints of God, (laughs) Wednesday night, listen to me, Wednesday night, it makes my heart leap for joy. When I look right over there and I see Sister Dorothy sitting here on Wednesday night. I said, I wish everybody in this valley could see Sister Dorothy. Who has come here all her life to this church. If she's there a bit able, God bless your heart. She's here! Not because of me. Because she's seen a lot of preachers come and go. She's seen a lot of church folks blow in and blow out. Land in here for a little while, long enough to where they find, that well, there's something better down the road. Then they stay there until they find a little something greener on the other side of the fence. Gone. I'm going to tell you something. Sister Dorothy didn't feel good. A lot of times she comes to church, she don't feel good. And I'm telling you, she fell last week, hurt her side, hurt her I know. Because after we went over to that picnic the other day, I went up to her house, me and Charlotte did, and had prayer with her, and she sneezed and her side grabbed. But other than that one time, she's sitting there with a smile on her face. I'll tell you what, she's got a song in her heart. Amen. Wednesday night, we was up here singing in the choir. And Larry was sitting there with his mom, and I looked back there, and her mouth was moving to every word of them hymns. She knows them! You know, God bless your heart. Listen, I love you. I want what Sister Dorothy's got. I was sitting down there at the nursing home with uh, Univ and Joanne, and Charlotte was over on that side of the room and I was over on this side of the room because we moved the curtain and we said for all intents and purposes I'm visiting Joanne, she's visiting Univ. We was all four talking. And we said, boy, I sure wish y'all could come on back to church. And both of them at the same time 
just about in unison, said, boy, I wished I could too. Joanne's been a member of this church since she was seven years old. Univee's been here her whole life. Hilda's down there. She's smiling. She's singing. She's reading her testament. She loves the Lord. Pray. Listen, I want what they've got. I want the Holy Ghost and I want the joy of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. If we go around here and all we do is belly gripe about what the news is talking about, if all we do, listen, we get wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in the muckety-muck of this world, the devils took us off the battlefield. Amen. Bless you, Lord. We need to go down the road saying, Praise God, my heavenly home Amen. is bright and fair. Amen. And I feel like traveling on. Amen. So what am I going to do then? I'm going to watch and pray. Listen to what Jesus said. Verse 31, So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know, that, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. There's going to be a generation when all these things are happening, and we're seeing a lot of it right now. I mean, you go back and read the rest of this chapter. Signs and wonders in the heavens. They had another big fireball coming across somewhere in the United States the other day. They had one in Russia that broke the windows out, caused a bunch of injuries a few years ago. These meteorites or whatever they are streaking across the sky. They said one of them was booking along at so many thousand miles of an hour as, as it miles an hour as it entered the the atmosphere. We're seeing signs and wonders in the heaven. We're seeing earthquakes, wars, and rumors of wars. Just this last week, rumors of war. Our president said if Russia don't knock it off with this hacking, that's a precursor to war. Then a few days later they said the United States and Israel are blaming Iran for a, a, a ship that was attacked over there uh, somewhere in the Persian Gulf, and that's a precursor to war. We're hearing rumors of wars. We're seeing wars in Sears, the famines, the pestilence as it goes along with it. Children starving to death because of war. And all the things that's going on in this world. And Jesus said, John chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You know what? If your heart's troubled and you're fearful, it's because you allowed it. If you've got the Holy Ghost living in you, you are fully equipped to have peace of mind. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy labor, laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. You can do what you want to do. Thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come nigh thee. Jesus said, If a man liveth and believeth on me, he shall never die. Praise God, I've got that confidence. To where I can lay my head on the pillow at night and say, Good night, Lord, I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There's coming a generation, though, and that generation won't pass until all these things be for. You know why? Because when that tribulation kicks off, it's only going seven years. It's so bad, the Bible doesn't pull any punches on it. Scripture doesn't pull any punches on it. It's so bad that if it went one second longer than that seven years, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, they, they will be, those days will be shortened. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. All my eggs are in this basket right here. This old black back King James Bible, praise God, it's brought me this far to take me on into the city. I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, plus or minus nothing for my salvation. Amen. Praise God, and I'm going on holding on to something that is unchanging unmovable, rooted and grounded and anchored and settled in the praise God, the Word of Almighty God. The world wants to get you on their, their page. You look at what the world's looking at on TV. They're concerned with Britney Spears. They're concerned with Simone Biles. They're concerned with entertainers and sports people. You know what? I was in the kitchen this last week and the news was on and somebody said that Simone Biles, I think is who they was talking about, said she's not going to be the Messiah that they thought she was. I said, they what? I think I was getting a pan out from under the counter, clanging around. I looked up and I said, what? <laughs> I said, there's one Messiah. His name's Jesus. Amen. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Amen. The world's all wrapped up in entertainment. The idols that they put up on a pedestal. Politicians. Entertainers. Sports people. Oh, we're just going to, we'll follow them. Oh, don't you want to get on board? Man told me a few years ago down here at the nursing home, 2016, got all up in my face. He says he's a preacher. I don't know. I, I hope he is. Man got up in my face down here at the nursing home. And he said, <laughs> just leaned right up in my face, said, Donald Trump's going to save us all. I said, and here all this time I've been preaching Jesus. He won't save your sin sick soul. Amen. Neither will Joe Biden. Amen. My faith ain't in the Republicans. It ain't in the Democrats. My faith ain't in Hollywood. My faith ain't in the NFL. My faith is in Jesus. Amen. Period. Like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. I like what Brother Mark Stewart said this morning. I was listening to him on the way. He said, I've been, I've been serving the Lord for 40 years, he said. He said, if, if there was, wasn't anything to it, don't you think I'd know by now? It's real. Amen. Eleven of these disciples were martyred for the word of God. I'm staying in the boat with the Lord Jesus Christ. The waters are getting a little choppy the closer we're getting to shore, but I'm staying in the boat with Jesus. Listen to what he said. I'm out of time. Verse 34, And take heed to yourselves. You better be careful. Brother Jeff says it all the time when he's teaching Sunday school. Be careful. Be careful, Christian friend. Be careful, saint of God, because if you ain't careful, you'll fall into sin. Amen. Listen to what he said. Take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. That means weighed down with carousing, overindulging in the things of this world. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness. Cares of this life, there it is, worrying. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. It's going to spring quickly. It talks about a snare. That's like what you'd use to catch a bird. I'm going to tell you, a bird trap's got to be fast. You can't sneak up on a bird. You ever try? My granddad used to tell me all kinds of things when I was a little feller. He, I'd get a donut, and he'd say, don't eat the hole. I'm about the hole in the donut. Well, there ain't nothing there to eat. But he'd say, don't eat the hole, it'll kill you. At first, it kind of worried me. <laughs> I hadn't started school yet, and I'd be like, <laughs> around the edge. And then them, in the springtime, them robins would be out there trotting across the yard. Granddad said, if you throw salt on his tail, you'd catch him. Get away. No. If you can throw salt on his tail, you'd catch him. And I'd, you know. Mm. Mm. I'm telling you, if you want to try to catch a bird, you better be fast. How fast is it going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye? At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And listen, we shall be changed. Praise God. How fast is the rapture going to happen? It's going to be like a flash bulb going off. Amen. And then all of a sudden, that tribulation is coming upon this earth. Fast and furious. Amen. There's going to be a man step on the scene. He's going to have all the answers. Can I tell you, Jesus said that we're in the last days now. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. But Jesus said that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. It's always that close. 
You say, well, that can't happen. Listen, when Adolf Hitler came to power back in 1930s, how many people followed after him? Didn't matter that he was slaughtering people left and right that the German army was moving like a juggernaut all across Europe and, and people were dying by the bushelfuls and everything. They were still praising his name and goose-stepping and, and, and giving him the Heil Hitler. And that was 75 years ago. This world is right because, listen, they're following people instead of following God. You say, is that scriptural? Yeah, the Bible says men shall be lovers of their own selves more than lovers of God. They put people up on a pedestal. Listen. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Here it is. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Pray always. Watch and get ready. Because I'm telling you, it's going to spring quickly. Watch and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape. In other words, you better make sure you're saved. Because if you're not saved, you're not going. You say, well, I'll just, uh, I'll just be martyred during the tribulation time. And I'll just lay my head on a chopping block during the tribulation. No, you won't. If you won't live for him now, you won't die for him then. Amen. These last days, God needs some Samsons. It'll take the word of God. Like Samson took a jawbone of an ass and slew a thousand Philistines with it. Praise God. He needs some Samsons. It'll slay a thousand devils. Praise God. And preach the word of God unashamedly and boldly without fear. Without compromise, I'm telling you, listen, praise God. The Lord's coming back and we don't have time to be playing. Where are the children? I'll tell you one thing. A lot of them's dying and going to a place called hell. Amen. And eternity is a long time to be spending in any one place. Amen. I'm telling you, this, the Lord's getting ready. To, this thing's getting ready to wrap up. I mean, this tent will soon be folded. And we're going home to a family reunion and we're going to be with Jesus, but what of those that are left behind? Time's running out. If you hear this morning, you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. You've never been born again. I am pleading with you this morning by the mercies of God to come to Jesus and repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ere you die in your sins, and drop off into a place called hell. And if you do that, you'll walk right past the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ to get there because you've heard the word of God today. Amen. Jesus, the Son of Man, man sinned, so man had to pay the penalty for sin. And Jesus went to the cross and suffered that awful death to save you. He died, was buried, and rose again to save you. Amen. If we spurn that kind of love, we spurn the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and say no thank you to the grace of Almighty God, what's left? The law. And the law says we're guilty. And if you don't accept the grace of God, if you don't accept the free gift of the grace of God, we'll stand before the judgment bar at the great white throne. And you'll hear a, a voice that sounds like Niagara Falls of many waters saying, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. But what a blessing to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ one day and to hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joys.